Hi, the question for this clip is the central question of my, my University of Industrial Distribution seminar. Is getting paid for service value a good first question? <clears throat> and my answer is both yes and no. I think that it's a good first question because it's a, it's a good central priority. Clearly, it's been a big problem for a lot of distributors for 20 plus years, and it gets worse all the time. There's more and more global supply of excessively excellent equally commodities. Our customers are under more and more pressure in shopping uh, for better and better economic value, however they define it, uh, sometimes pretty simplistically as, you know, who's got the lowest price. Uh, but it, it, it's a key issue. And I think that most distributors who are asking the question, that's not all of them, but it's certainly the top half, top top 25%, they probably have pretty good uh, generic service value. Uh, and so they're, 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 it's a fair question to say, well, you don't really, you know, busting our tail feathers here to, 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 to do the job. Why, why are we having to settle for last look, meet the price? Um, I think it's probably uh, an insufficient question uh, in the sense that because we've been asking it for 20 plus years, it's not actionable. So obviously there are other issues. Maybe, maybe getting paid or getting last look plus, plus, you know, to meet the price is a symptom of what root, root, root causes or drivers. So we have to get down to some level where we can actually start getting some traction, getting some results and getting paid for what we're doing. So that's a, and second question point is, is that service value is too vague. Um, it turns out that service value is peculiar or has to be tuned rather uh, to the niche. If you think of a decathlete, they're good at 10 different events, but if they have to go up against somebody who just focuses on one event, they lose every time because the event specialist has, has, a, has a, a properly structured body that's finely tuned for just doing that event, and they're going to win, and they're going to get all the gold in that particular event, and that's really the way the free market works. So we have to pick our niches, uh, and then for each niche, tune our service value. Then beyond that, we can't offer the same service value bundle uh, where the same standard services are packaged into the bundle, built into the price of the goods. Small customers, we have to unbundle some of the services and put in higher prices and stricter minimums and things like that. Um, so we have to we have to deal with that particular issue. Um, the uh, I suppose in a in a in a in a everyday transactional world, when a customer says, "Here's last look," uh, do our salespeople feel 110% confident about saying, well, gee, it, let me explain to you why I should get last look an extra point for myself, an extra point for the service force I'm riding. Uh, clearly, we need to do some preparation work to be ready for that uh, and, 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 and have that kind of an answer. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I think that, that we, can't, we can't see a lot of these service value issues, problems, solutions if we're so caught up and preoccupied with traditional product-centric selling, pushing, promoting, volume kinds of, of, of activities. Uh, so we have to, to a certain degree, get in touch with our unspoken historical belief system or assumptions for what it takes to be successful and modify those and add to them to be able to, to get a clear view of what we need to do to, to solve the problem of getting paid for service value. So it's a it's a good start, but it's insufficient, and uh, this e-video clip is going to help you on your journey. Thanks.